Greetings and good morning. Welcome back to I'd Lather Be Shaving. I am Douglas Smythe, and to my left, Matt Besarsen. Today, let's talk about slants, baby. We're going to be diving into the world of these diagonal shavers, talking about the Gillette slant razor, and doing some trivia of terms in the shaving world. Yeah, and I'm going to kick his ass on this one. <laughs> All of this and more on today's episode of I'd Lather Be Shaving. Was that a sh I don't know what I was doing. So in nineteen oh five. Uh, Gillette Safety Razor Company came out with their their full production of the traditional double-edged safety razor. But just 10 years later, in 1915, Thomas Wilde, uh, English-born uh, patriot, pa filed a patent in the USA for this crazy kind of diagonal slanted safety razor guard that he came up with. And the idea behind it was that you could actually get a more efficient shave, almost kind of like a uh, two strokes in one by just kind of curving and, and placing the blade on this on this diagonal, and it like was like a guillotine. Yeah, like a guillotine, and that's actually like a <laughs> guillotine cutters or I guillotine was cliche. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, it it proved itself immediately to be very popular, and you really see the Germans kind of running with this. Uh, you see, of course, companies like Mercur, which this is what this is. Um, there's companies like. Uh, Hoffritz, which was a, a another brand that that Mercur made uh, items for, also Kohl's. Today, you still have the classic, uh, you know, Mercur slant razor, but there's other you know guys out there. I think actually Douglas here has come out with a, a slanted razor here on a Bakelite. Yep, up and comb slant. There is companies like Icon, who's made a stainless steel slant above the tie, even Rockwell. But uh, everyone and their mother has pretty much taken the slant on. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe even Gillette? Oh yes, Maybe. the Gillette Slant. We'll talk about that in a little bit later. Okay. But going to this guy, the Neogam, this was a really ah. kind of transitional one. Yeah. What do you know about these? Well, a little bit. This one actually, this this is a pretty much a great way to understand the slant. <laughs> I mean, look at that. This is literally on a slant. Yeah. And it's not your, your curved slant like this, but it's the same principle. Uh, and this is a great one to learn on because it forces you to keep it straight as you're shaving with it. You know, I have this uh, chin strap thing going on, so it's perfect for me. You know, it's already cutting at that angle, but a lot of people will adjust when they're mm. using it, and they just miss out on the slant effect. But the slant is, I mean, like, again, it comes out of Germany. Uh, Germans are known for being really efficient with their designs. This is like economy of motion. This is the way you want to cut something, is at an angle. So this, with this exaggerated pose, you get that, and uh, again, this is the Neogam, by the way, by Neo Lux. This was patented in, I believe, 1937 by Hermann Zeiss. Uh, about eight models were released then. This is one. It's got the that, fluted handle. Yeah, this is one with the fluted handle. There's some with metal handles. Uh, there's open combs, um, a beveled, scalloped, so on and so forth. But this is like 90% Bakelite with this metal clip. And uh, if you if you have one of these and haven't figured out how to take it apart yet, it just clip, clips on like, like that. A slide. Yeah, so just like this. Which I didn't know at first when I first picked this up, so I was just like, I don't get it. <laughs> right. What do you think? I, I think it's awesome. I, I mean, if you the example I've given uh, to customers before in uh, one of our videos as well about the slant showdown. Um, think about it like if you ever try to take like a sticker off a piece of glass, you can kind of sit there and hack at it with a blade. But if you kind of slide that that blade by the sticker on the glass, as this analogy goes, it kind of slices right through it. So it's a but difference. You mean hit it from an angle. Yeah, yeah. Kind of hit. You know, if you if you run the blade down on an angle, it is so much more efficient. You're doing it all wrong. I know, right? It's just goo gone. <laughs> Sorry, go on. No, so uh, I think it's the it's the principle of slicing rather than chopping. Because if you have a, a traditional DE, it's going to hit your stubble perpendicular. Whereas this is kind of slicing through it, it's, it's providing a diagonal kind of action. And that's why the guillotine 
keeps coming up because it's right. the same principle. I think early guillotines or guillotines were a straight blade and it would stop sometimes. The blade would stop, and, you know, and then they'd have to let the person go. But uh, <laughs> but you get a more efficient cut from an angle, yeah. like a scythe. Yeah. So um, another popular part of this is a kind of a misused term that somebody started that was called the Gillette Slide. Have you heard this term? I have. I heard that a few years back, and I believe that came to us from Mr. Mantic59 himself. Yeah, Mark. So he, he did a video years ago uh, on kind of this motion of kind of a sliding diagonal motion using a traditional straight guard razor, and he called it the Gillette Slide. And a lot of people have thought that maybe Gillette had, you know, termed this or coined this term, but in fact they didn't. They did refer as far back as 1907 or so to a diagonal stroke. You'll see that in some of the early kind of shave yourself instruction manuals that would accompany their safety measures. It would show arrows pointing to a diagonal stroke to do, and I think they even knew back then that this was a more efficient way of mowing down that grain. And that may have inspired, uh, was, what was his name, Thomas Wilde? Thomas Wilde, yeah, Th 1915. Maybe the Germans were paying attention and uh, they <laughs> incorporated that all in one right. geometry. One yeah. Yeah, well slants are super cool. If you haven't already done so, you can pick up a modern made slant razor for uh, as inexpensive in the $25 to $45 range. 20 Yeah. <laughs> you can pick up cool vintage ones at antique stores or thrift stores. Uh, but either way, if you haven't already done so, give a slant razor a try. I always tell people they're great for sensitive skin because you get the efficiency of two strokes in one. Yeah. Um, and they, they should be a part of every, everyone's shave done. I agree, and I would say start off, if you're new to slants, with like a middle of the road blade, like Astro, yeah. or whatever you rate a middle of the road blade to be. Don't go super sharp. Don't go Bolzano or Feather from the get go. No, work um, your way up. Yes, yes. Because you're gonna be surprised at how much more efficient they are. It's truly amazing. I actually prefer lighter ones than to heavier ones mm. too, and that's why there's a lot of classic Bakelite slants out there, folks, with crazy designs. Um, Walbush comes to mind, which is a uh, humpback is what they made. Uh, a very cool, in fact, this one was inspired by that, but if you look at this razor, it's almost got a pyramid on top, and that angle right there is, is, is the angle you want. So mm -hmm. if you're new to shaving, Walbush, uh, again, made this classic Bakelite. Look into that. They're, they're, they're not that difficult to find. The price is, is up there, but totally worth it. Great shaver, and again, I, something about the lightness makes it work for me. How do you feel about that? Sl uh, light versus heavy when it comes to slants. You know, I've used I've used you know this guy and I've used other baker lights. I think they're really nice and they're great for travel. I have always liked the more of the heft. The in Hoffert's. fact, yeah, this was this Hoffert's right here is in my display case uh, at Razor Emporium. We brought it up for the video today, but this was actually my personal uh, razor for years when I first got into shaving. Uh, I, I love the heft, but that's just me. I've always yeah, of course. It does have some half. There you go. <laughs> Heavy. Well, cool. I'm glad we did this, Matt. Me too, Doug. Shall we get on with the game? Dun dun dun. Speaking of Mantic, for today's challenge, we're going to be taking a, a reference from one of his articles he wrote about terminology in the shaving world, and we're going to be playing a trivia game to see who can figure out some of these acronyms. Did you uh, alphabet soup was it called? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Well, go <laughs> we're going to we're going to dive into some of these acronyms of the today's challenge to see who can decipher some of these common three or four abbreviated lettered words. Are you up for it? I am so up. I'm looking. I'm ready to go here. The only problem I have is uh, I don't have spell check installed. Well, too bad. Shit. So here we go. Let's do it. First word. Acronym, I mean. S-A-D. Okay, S-A-D. I'm feeling kind of sad. <laughs> I feel like Dan Quayle. Reveal. Soap acquisition disorder is correct. What? <laughs> I thought it was going to tie into today's episode with all these slants. One for Doug, zero for Matt. Okay. M 
Ah. <laughs> Can I use slang to describe that? To... Is that okay? Huh? I'm... You're looking over here. I am not looking over there. He's looking over here. <laughs> you were watching. Reveal. That is correct. Okay. Sass. That's a fabric store here in Phoenix. Sass. I dated her. I <laughs> met her at Burning Man. Sass. Um, sass? This is not my, my strong. Yeah, I don't know. I, this is a good one. Not a strength of mine, if you will. Sass is a... Uh, Reveal. Soap as sun. That's right, soap as sun. Um, it's a cup. No? <laughs> ah. Man, that was a sass. <laughs> the correct answer is socially acceptable shave. I like his. Yeah, I think this Strong is a Strong aftershave is like. Yeah, like that's a sass. Yeah. That's not real. Oh man, I don't know. <laughs> I know what HHT is. A T That's not what's being asked. But TTH. It's not twist to hurrah. The thin hair. You know, you're shaving and you come up to that last, you're like, hi, it's just a little thin hair over here. Or like you're just looking in the mirror and you notice that it's thin, your hair yeah. is thin, you know what I mean? That's what I thought. That's a sad day. SAD. S -A -D. <laughs> oh. Are you really hiding it like that? Like, I am. I, I, I don't trust you at all. Reveal. You are correct. Yes! See, that one Interestingly, always... there's no X, you know. Well, it, it is. It's there, but it's silent. Okay, what else we got? I don't... Oh, come on. DFS. Are I'm hiding mine. This is like super easy. What? Yeah. DFS. Oh. It's a hip hop group from the 80s. All right, all right, all right. I had to think about it for a second. Yeah, clearly, out loud. Reveal. Ah. You are correct. Are we at 10 yet? I've seen this. Oh, I got it. Ha. Do you have it? I do. Is it a real one? It's a real one. <laughs> I'm serious. Reveal. 
It is a fake. <laughs> <laughs> you ass. ass. <laughs> uh, hey, if you need an ass, just give yourself an aftershave sample. Aftershave <laughs> sample. That's not bad. Well, if I put the ass in Douglas Smythe, think about it. Douglas. Smythe. Smythe. There's an ass in the middle. Smythe. Y M M V. Really? That's an easy one. Shuttlecock. Do I get bonus points for the little picture of like an odometer or whatever? <laughs> That's nice. And last one. This one is worth two points. How, what, what number are we at? I have no idea. Let's keep doing this. Oh, that's the easy one. Clearly, I won. So the score is seven to seven. No, seven to seven. So there was a tie. No, there wasn't a tie. Yeah, I clearly <clears throat> was joking. In you didn't write down your mileage may vary. You wrote down shuttlecock. Boing. When certain circles, shuttlecock means your mileage may vary. I've never heard of that unless it's Yiddish. Because you have no friends, <laughs> and it is Yiddish. Mish McGeggy. <laughs> that was Spanish and Yiddish. That was Spanish. Regardless, and Douglas I won. was making up terms again, so <laughs> clearly it was a tie, but you know, we'll give this one to Doug, I guess. Yes. Sore loser. <laughs> Let's not like issue like a recount or anything over here. No, no, yeah. no, no. Contested election. Uh, well, this has been a, another killer episode of I'd Lather Be Shaving Man. I uh, feel really good about this. You should. Please like, comment, and subscribe below, and let us know if you have any suggestions, questions, or comments about future episodes. Or a new abbreviations. I'm all about new holidays, new parades. Made up. New fake acronyms. Fake abbreviations. Real abbreviations. Fake. Not fake, real. Dream acronyms, if you will. Leave them in the comment section below. And until next time, good morning and goodbye. I'd rather be shaving. Salud. <laughs>